Hello there, and welcome to Andre's Artist Profile. Now, yesterday was the birthday of Anthony Kiedis, the lead singer for the group that I'm going to be profiling today, and that is the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, there are going to be gaps um, in my collection. The Red Hot Chili Peppers have made a lot more albums than I've actually been able to find or even listen to, but I'll get into why maybe a little bit later in this, but it's kind of... So, I do have their first record here. This is a 2003, the definitive remasters uh, of the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, debut album. It has a tipper sticker here. You know, the original album actually didn't have that. Um, at this point, uh, Helal Slovak was alive and recording with the band. Here's a CD if you want to look at it. It's just a mini typical logo. Okay, that's their first album. I love that one. They're really the masters of what they call the funk core movement. You know, they have some, you know, punk rock kind of style guitars, but their rhythms, you know, are very much out of, you know, the Africa, African-American uh, aesthetic and that meaningful, you know, funk sound. And Flea is a spectacular funk pop bassist who's perfect you know, funk rock bassist, of mixing, you know, this punk emotionalism and intensity with the type of clean, quiet fire that you really get from funk. They're, no disrespect to Rick James, but they are the ultimate, the Ed Hot Chili Peppers are the ultimate uh, punk funk, funk and roll group. Anyway, their second album is probably their funkiest overall. 1985, Freaky Styly. This is not a remaster. There's the members of the band at uh, this particular point. Produced by George Clinton. I don't know if you can see that. Jungle Man is an amazing groove. Flea's playing on that is just really good, really funky. This is again another original CD, the Uplift Mofo Party Plan from 1987. Showing a bit more punk influences than before, but um, the parental advisory is actually on the back of this. So, you know, we'll open up the album, the CDs, nothing special. Um, here's their 1989 album, Mother's Milk. It's actually not that dissimilar to the previous album, except they do a cover, well, a couple covers here, of Jimi Hendrix's Fire and Stevie Wonder's Higher Ground. Um, Hello, Slovak is gone by this point, sadly, so that's another original album. This is dedicated to his memory. So there's the band at that time. Very familiar imagery. Now, their big breakthrough album was called Blood, Sugar, Sex, Magic. Came out, I believe, in 1991. You know, I don't actually have that. And, you know, I like that album, even with stuff like, you know, Under the Bridge on it is, is a great song. It's rather uh, reflective and poignant. But anyway, so let's move up to this one. One Hot Minute. Okay, this came out in 1995. They were trying to branch out. But, you know, I, I love Melody to go with something hard. And, and this album is definitely not based on Melody. It's very psychedelic. I don't mind that. I don't mind experimentation. But the lyrics on this album are really, really dark and depressing. To be honest... I had to shut it off on Cut 9. I just felt so overwhelmed by the darkness of the lyrics. You know, the alternative rock era, that gloominess. I, I really wasn't into it personally. There's the band at that point. They're still very talented, but this is not my favorite album by theirs. I guess a lot of people second that opinion. One Hot Minute from 1995. Okay. This is an album that I actually got for three bucks. <laughs> Their double um, 2006 album, Stadium Arcadium. Uh, a better example of what they were doing on One Hot Minute, but they're returning to their funk sound, really, more or less. And, you know, the double album. And their newest one, uh, I'm With You. This came out in 2011. And I'm looking forward to the follow-up. This is not a bad album. You know, they've grown and they've expanded as a group, but... They've done a pretty good job with it. So that is my Red Hot Chili Peppers. I should note that I really enjoy all these albums. They're really lively and interesting and musically innovative. 
and all of that, but one in here I'm not particularly fond of, but the rest of them are all really good. I'd recommend anything they did from 84 to 91 are just fantastic. All fantastic records, you know, if you like that sort of thing. So anyway, this is Andre, and I'll see you all next time.